All right, now that I've gotten this base plate mounted, the steel base plate mounted on my bookends, I want to go ahead and make this vertical part. So instead of drawing the sketch this time in the actual assembly and creating a block file, we're going to do a little bit different. So that way you can kind of learn all the different techniques. I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click on the uh, actual vertical face here. And what I'm going to do at this time is set myself normal to that view. And I'm just going to take some measurements and write it down. So I'll use my little trusty notepad and I'll come over here and I'll take some measurements. So I'll go over to my evaluate tab, which is right here, and I can select my measurement tool. And lets me get some measurements and write those down. But in this case right here, I've also gone ahead and scroll out here, and I've put that up here on my flyout menu. So I've got it in both places. So I'm going to go ahead at this time, and I'm going to measure from this point here up to that one chamfer right there. So that tells me my distance in the, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, rotate this around, let's take a look at it. My distance in that axis is be the distance in the y axis here is 6.81256 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. So I'll come over here to my measurement in delta, in delta y. I'm just going to highlight that number right there and I'm going to copy it. So I'll do a control C to copy that. And then now I'll X that window out and I'll come over here to uh, actually I've got to create a new file. So I'll create myself a new file. And of course, it's going to be a part. And I'm just going to go out here and I'll go into front plane. And I will set myself normal to that front plane. Okay. Come over here, and I'll, I think at this time I'm going to do a center sketch. Uh, do a rectangle by center. So I just come over here to the datum, just pull off there, then go to smart dimensions here, and this is kind of tricky here. Now it says it's 78, uh, looks like it's 78 millimeters. Oh, there's a problem. Okay, no problem. We can fix that. We're going to go ahead and key in control V, even though we're in millimeters. We're going to put in inches, and we're going to say minus, using our keyboard here, say minus. 0.25 of an inch. Now remember we want to be set back from that one edge at the top a quarter of an inch like we were on the base plate around the edges a quarter of an inch. So we set there we put that in. We'll check that off. And it's made that modifications there. It still says millimeters. Well, we'll fix that. We'll come over here and we'll set it to inch pound second. We'll go back and double check our edit document units. And we'll make sure we're set to four decimal places. And we're not. So we'll set it to there. We'll set it to here. I like to go three on my angle readout. So I'll go three there, and on the length, I'll go to four decimal places, accept that, and put that in. Okay, so, oh gosh, i got to change that background color. You know, I am about that. So I changed the background color. That's done. Good. Okay. Now, let's go back over to our, our model, our assembly, and we'll check out one other thing here. We'll go back to the bookend assembly, and we're going to make a measurement here. So... We know that this distance here, uh, we actually don't know what that distance is, so we're going to rotate this around, and we're just going to use our, again, use our measurement command, go to evaluate, select our tape measure, and we're going to go ahead and do a right mouse click and clear selections. And now all I'm going to do is select here, and select here, and that's going to give me a distance of 4.25 inches. Pretty cool. We'll grab that here. 4.25 inches using our right mouse click and actually left mouse button. We'll highlight that. Remember, do a control C to copy that value. You can go ahead and X that out. And now let me show you another trick here. I've been going up here and hitting the pull down menu and showing you how to get to it that way. Let me show you another way. You can do a control tab and SolidWorks will show you everything you got up. Now, it doesn't have a preview set for this one right here. I don't know what that is. Actually, what that is, is the part that we're trying to build for the vertical piece. So I just click on that. And what it does is it opens me up into that file. I'll go back over here to Sketch, and I'll do a uh, right mouse click on Sketch, and I'll come up here and say Edit Sketch. I'll go up here to Smart Dimension, and I'm going to select this top here. And again, I'm just going to put in a Control V and paste in that value that I got for my measurement on the assembly file. And I'll check that off. Pretty cool. All right. Looks good. Now, if we recall, our thickness of our part was actually, 
an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit features. I'm going to hit extrude boss base. And it's set to a tenth of an inch. We're not going to go a tenth of an inch. We're going to go 0.125 of an inch. So we're set to, uh, our units are set to inches now. Because we change that, so just go ahead and hit enter. So we did that. So now we selected that, and we're going to go ahead and check off this boss base, accept it, and there it is. All right. Now let's go ahead, and we're going to do some playing around here so we can kind of see some cool effects. So we've got that in there. I want to show you the interactivity of designing a part and, make, and placing that part in the assembly, and then going back and forth to the part in the assembly and making changes. So, we're going to go ahead and save this file as raw as it is. Oh, we get, go ahead and give it a material type. So, we give it a material type. Right mouse click on that. And we say edit material. Okay. I already got plain carbon. But let's just go ahead and look at this here just to kind of see what other uh, materials we've got. So, we'll select on that. Now, SolidWorks will always default uh, when it comes up into steel because it always thinks you're making stuff out of metal. So, we've got uh, carbon steel here at the top. We can select that. Uh, we've got all these different steel values that come up here. You've got cast alloy steel, so this has got some kind of cast uh, to it. You've got plain carbon steel down here. You've got, uh, let's scroll up here a little bit, and you're going to see uh, the different values and different types that you've got out here. So here's a very common one that a lot of people use is ASTM A36. That's common. Everybody uses that a lot. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with what I've been doing, which is just uh, plain carbon steel. Oh, here's your galvanized steel, which we did that texture earlier. Just go to plain carbon steel. We'll just go with that. Hit apply. And then you got to hit close. All right. So we get that. So now we're going to jump back to our um, assembly. Now let's check that thing again. Let's go do a control uh, tab. And now you see it still hasn't, it shows us the part here extruded. But we haven't saved that part. we got to fix that. So we'll go up here and hit the save. Whoops, go back to the other one. We'll go ahead and hit save. And now we're going to say vertical uh, steel plate. And I'll give it a version 001 just in case I want to play around with that later. Hit that. We're going to come over here to uh, our window, we'll go down here to our assembly, and pull that up. Okay, so we'll pull that up, we'll zoom out here, I'm um, just going to hit the F command to fit that view, click out here to the side, deselect that uh, face, go back to assembly, go to insert, and again it's going to show you the two parts that you've already got open, so if you've got a whole bunch of parts open, like I'm guilty of working in a lot of times, you can see all those parts. So I'm going to go with the vertical steel plate, and I'm going to place that out here. Now, one thing real quickly on that um, on that particular uh, issue is that you have uh, a lot of times a lot of parts coming up. It gets really, really confusing. So it's best from a housekeeping standpoint to go back in there and change uh, change out that and close out a lot of those files. So SolidWorks runs and, and performs a lot better. So we're going to do that. We're going to go over here and we're going to open up our window and we're going to go to Steel Base Plate, open that file up. And we're going to just save it one more time. And then we're going to go ahead and close it. Because we're really not using it right now. And there's no sense in, in uh, dealing with that file being open and, and hurting our system performance. We're going to close that file. So we close it. And it puts us back in uh, this here. Now, a third way in which you can get back and forth to files is you can uh, select this part here. And then you can say, open that part. Well, it's really already open. It's just going to pop you back into it real quick. So now that we've done that, Let's do something different. I showed you how to do a chamfer command. Uh, one thing I could do is a sketch with extrude cut. So I'm going to select this face here. And I'm going to select and go normal to that face. I'm going to scroll right up here to it. And I'm going to do a sketch on that face. So I'm going to find the midpoint on that, which is right here. And I'm just going to come up here. And notice how, as you snap to it, you can see angularly what you have. And like right there is 45 degrees. I'm going to go with that 45 degrees. And I'm going to keep carrying that sketch down. And I'm going to come over here to this edge here. And I've got this little nibble that I'm cutting out. Well, that's actually going to be the grind angle that I'm going to create when I uh, make this part and get it ready to weld. So I've got that in there now. And I'm going to go ahead and come back to features, even though I'm still in that sketch. 
and I'm going to do extrude cut and I can't really see it so I'm going to go ahead and click on this now I see my little arrow well I can grab that arrow and just drag it all the way out this way that's one method or I can come over here and say through all now it's important that you understand the through all what through all does if I ever come back and modify this part I've already set this end condition on the extrude cut to through all so anytime I modify the width of this, it'll always have that extrude cut through all. If I just went with blind and extended this out, and later I decide to make this part wider, it's not going to go all the way through, especially if I go past this distance. So that's why I went ahead and selected through all. Because each time I modify the thickness or the width of this part, that through all cut will maintain that condition on that one edge. I select that, and I do that, and it's done. Okay looks pretty good so now you can see that it's extruded it all the way through so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that little round over because I like to have I don't like having sharp edges on my product so I'll go ahead and hit the fillet not fillet some students like to call it fillets excuse me fillets but it's not a fish this <laughs> we still leave it like that so I do a little quick round over about a ten it's really kind of arbitrary what I put on that number because it's basically as you make it and you fab it up you're gonna have whatever you're gonna cut off there so we'll round that over so we'll hit the F command to fit it. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a rebuild, which is also a shortcut to that is Control B, as you see right there on that pop-up. Save our file, and we'll flip back over here to the assembly. Make sure we save our file. And so it says, "Ah, oh, models contain the assembly have changed. Would you like to rebuild?" We're well, not sure. We'd like to do that. So we'll rebuild it. Now, what's kind of important now is to figure out which face we're going to mate to. Now, again, I want to have that little slot there where I create my bead for my weld. So I want to make sure that, that this face right here, zoom out here a little bit, this face right here is coincident with this face here on the wood. So let's go ahead and make sure that happens. I'll select the wood, pop up comes up, I'll select this inside face here, and it now it's going to mate it to that edge. Ah, that's what I want. Good. Okay, don't get too concerned about, you know, all these parts kind of overlap. We're going to fix all that. So we're going to scroll down underneath here using our center mouse button, and, and we'll click on that bottom face right there. Again, whoops, we lost it. What happened to the pop-up? Well, that's okay. We'll just come back over here to mate, select that, and then we got it. So let's zoom out here, use our center mouse button. We'll push down and pull, and we can rotate on that center mouse button. Scroll back up here to this, click on that. So it pulls it back up there. That looks pretty good. We'll accept that mate. And so now we're going to grab this edge here and we're going to mate that to this edge here. All right. Let's take a look at this. Accept that. That looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and look to the uh, side. Let's do a right mouse click. Hit myself uh, normal to that side. I just want to see it. And see this little slot we got in here? Yeah, it's kind of not done exactly correct that's all right this gives us enough area here to drop a weld bead down in ground it back smooth all right that's looking pretty good all right let's go back to uh let's see what projection we got here uh, let's go to diametric see what we get yeah that's pretty nice so oh we forgot something we forgot to put in our our holes up here well let's just hold off on that a little bit we'll just hold off on that a little bit and what we're going to do now is instead we're going to go ahead and place another one in there because I want to show you how a change happens on the part when we modify it here. But let's go ahead and place another steel plate in there, vertical steel plate. We'll go back and do that. So you see how I did it here. So instead of me doing it again, we'll just let you figure it out yourself. Be back in a minute.